Today the feast of all saints will be the first. All saints see upon a Sunday today, which is going to be the 23rd, or uh, second after Sunday after Pentecost, or 22nd Sunday. But today the feast of all saints today, we'll be here again in Tennessee here in Manchester. And the epistle for this 20, uh, for this feast of all saints, falls on a Sunday this year. It's taken from the book of Apocalypse, chapter 7. In those days, behold, I, John, saw another angel descending from the rising of the sun, having the sign of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, till we sign the servants of our God on their foreheads. But I heard the number of them that were signed, and 144,000 were signed of every tribe of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were 12,000 signed. Of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 signed. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 signed. Of the tribe of Aser, 12,000 signed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 signed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 signed. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 signed. Of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 signed. Of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 signed. Of the tribe of Zabulon, 12,000 signed. Of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 signed. Of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 signed. After this I saw a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and in the sight of the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, who sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and the ancients and the four living creatures. And they fell down before the throne upon their faces, and adored God, saying, Amen, benediction, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, honor, and power, and strength to our God, forever and ever. Amen. And then the Gospel. Take that according to St. Matthew, chapter 5. And at that time, Jesus said to the multitude, Seeing the multitudes, went up into a mountain, and when he was sat down, his disciples came unto him. And opening his mouth, he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall possess the land. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after justice, for they shall have their fill. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they that suffer persecution for justice' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when, when, when they shall revile you and persecute you, and speak all that is evil against you and truly for my sake. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward is very great in heaven. Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. Father, Son, and Lord, Amen. Today we have the Feast of All Saints. And this is a great feast day in our Holy Church. It's actually one of the feasts of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The original name of this saint's feast is the Feast of Our Holy Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all the saints. Because there is no one who can be with God, no one that can see God face to face, no one that can be held in the arms of God, who has not been held in the arms of Mary first, and who did not receive from her all graces, and who is not a child of Mary. Because our Lord Jesus Christ said, You are the sons of God. You are the sons of God. And you are like unto gods, he said of us. But I will be the sons of God unless we have a mother, and she is our mother, and then also that we are like unto God in that we are held by her and formed by her into saints. So this is the Feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Feast of our Holy Mother and all the saints. We call this Feast of all saints. And on this day we consider the great saints, all the saints that are in heaven, and we're reminded of our obligations of the first commandment. I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt not have strange gods before me. So if I adore God, then a part of adoring God as His great majesty is to honor all those that are in His court, to honor all those that are his friends, 
If someone says that he adores the, and honors the king, but despises the king's spouse, and despises the king's children, and despises all the members of the king's court and all his ambassadors, then that man is a liar. For he who honors the king must necessarily show his honor by the great respect that he gives to his ambassadors and the members of his court. When the ambassador comes in the name of the king, if he is spit upon, the king is spit upon. If he is despised, the king is despised. And therefore, as part of our duty towards the first, uh, first commandment, we adore God. And this adoration of God means that we honor and love all of his saints. And Jacobus of Rosany tells us, this feast was caused to be celebrated that we might not neglect our duty towards God. Because we are obliged to adore God and therefore honor his saints. But we don't honor them enough. We forget to honor all of them. We cannot honor all of them by name because there are too many of them in the kingdom of heaven. And so therefore we have a feast dedicated to honoring the saints in general, all the saints. And they remind us also that we are all supposed to become saints. Each one of us is meant to be in the court of our Lord Jesus Christ. Each one is meant to be his ambassador in one way or another. We're all meant to be with him. And then we have this feast of all saints. So we are reminded also that this feast was established on May the 13th, back in the 300s, when the uh, Rome had finally been freed up from persecution in the time of Constantine. And there was a great temple called the Pantheon. And this temple of the Pantheon was built by the Romans in their great pride to show the greatness of their gods, of that all gods would be together under one roof. So they built a circular temple called the Pantheon. And they put the gods inside of this temple. The Christians came and said, all these gods are devils, and they removed all the gods from the temple. And they purified and exercised the temple. And they decided, what should we do with this temple? And so the Pope said, we will take this temple and make it a place of honoring the martyrs and all the saints. So they gathered many bones of the martyrs out of the catacombs. And they also of non-martyrs, confessors and virgins, and some of the apostles. And they brought them into the Pantheon on May the 13th and celebrated the Feast of All Saints. That their all saints must be honored, including some who we do not know their names, as some of those martyrs of the catacombs, and then also that the, and that all that heaven was made for the saints. And remember also here was a practice when the Romans built the temple, the Pantheon. They built a massive circular temple, and they, and they built a huge concrete roof with which have no supports. So when they constructed it, they filled the, the temple with dirt all the way to the top. And they poured the concrete on top of dirt. And they realized when they get finished building the temple, they'd have to clean out the dirt. So as they were building the temple, they threw gold coins and coins and coins into the dirt. They filled it with dirt. Each level of the walls were going up. They put more dirt, more coins in it. And as they built the concrete, as they continued to construct the concrete pour, it took three weeks to make the concrete pour, which they made the roof. It was the largest concrete pour in history. And they did it with three weeks to do the concrete pour of pouring the roof. And they built special roads going up to the top of the Pantheon, and they poured the concrete. And remember, when they were pouring concrete, they were men putting gold and silver inside of the dirt. When they finished pouring the concrete and it cured, then the emperor said, we've got to clean out the dirt from the temple. There's millions of tons of dirt inside the temple. And we don't want to do it. So you people go and clean out the dirt. And whatever coins you find, they're yours. And it says, in about five minutes, the dirt was gone from the temple. They didn't need to pay a construction crew. Thousands and thousands of people rushed into the temple, and they dug the dirt and dug the dirt and dug the dirt, and they gathered coins and coins and coins, and they were happily digging the dirt because they knew they would dig up treasures. And when we are building the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, so there is a, there is a, there is a, there is a scaffolding that must be put up there's dirt that must be put in to hold up the roof and it's constructed. And it must be cleaned out. And when we clean it out, we gather together gold and treasures. And so they gathered out these gold and treasures and very quickly and easily they cleaned out the temple. And then it was prepared to be the Pantheon. The church was not destroyed by the Catholic Church. It still stands today. And it is a church in honor of the saints. And that the feast was made originally in May and it was moved later on to November the 1st because of the fact that there was not enough food for those at the feast because they were at the end of the season of winter there's not much food left over from the winter and so they moved it to november that when all the harvest was complete so they have a great feast in honor of all the saints 
In any case, but what is it that is this reality of the saints? Why are there saints? And why would we celebrate the Feast of the Saints? One reason, says Jacobus, the Bishop of Orogeny, he says, these saints are given to us to encourage us that we also must become saints and that we can become saints. We were made in order to be saints. We were made to see God face to face. And there is a saint for everyone. And there are saints from every single walk of life, from every single background, including the background of heresy. Augustine was a very proud and wicked heretic. He was also a very impure and lived with a woman in sin for 13 years. And he abandoned his life of sin. He abandoned his heresy. And he became a great bishop and a great saint. We have saints that have been perfect from their childhood all the way until their death. We have saints that have come from every conceivable walk of life and every kind of background. And so therefore we must follow all there is a saint for every situation and every person. We have, for instance, that with those that, that don't like to fast, we have St. Christopher. St. Christopher was wanted to be a great saint. He wanted to follow the true God. But he was told, he was a big, strong guy, and he said, if you want to be a saint, you have to fast. He says, I don't fast. I don't fast. He said, well, what can you do? You are strong. So, all right, you can carry people across the river. And so he carried people across the river. And one day he carried Christ across the river. And Dismas became a saint on his last day in life. When he had lived a very wicked life, but he turned to Christ and said, remember when thou comest to thy kingdom. And he became a saint. So the heaven is filled with saints. We are meant to become saints. And the sanctity cannot come without the help of the hand of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that there are saints for all ages, all people, all civilizations, all times. And remember, remember that man was created to know, love, and serve God. What well, St. Ignatius says, man was created to praise, reverence, and serve God, and by this means to save his soul. Are there men that have known him and loved him and served him with the families against them? Are there men that know and love and serve him um, in, in war? Men that know, love, and serve him in isolation? Men that know, love, and serve them in their families? Men that know, love, and serve them in the monastery and in the convents? Men that know, love, and serve him on journeys? May the Lord will serve them in one place. We will find there are men that have known, loved, and served God in every conceivable circumstance, and therefore we can follow them as examples. Hence we should name our children by the names of the saints. Our children should be given the names of saints. They should be raised to become saints and bestow the stories and the lives of the saints. A good custom on this day is we have an All Saints Day party by which each of the children dresses up as a particular saint, learn about that saint, and dress as that saint, and then tell the story of that saint. It was how St. John de Brito became a saint. When he was five years old, he was, he was, his mother dressed him as St. Ignatius, as St. Francis Xavier. And St. Francis Xavier was the great missionary of India. And so he dressed as St. Francis Xavier as a little boy and he was five years old. And he dressed for his old saint's day consideration. He said, I want to be like Francis Xavier and I want to go to India and I want to die a martyr in India. And he never changed his mind. And he never turned from his resolution. So when he got older, he became a priest. He became a Jesuit like St. Francis Xavier. He went to India, and he died a martyr in India, and is a great Jesuit saint martyr. And now how did he become a saint? Because his mother dressed him as a saint. And his mother, by the way, regretted it. Because he was the friend of the king. He was the friend of the king of Portugal. He played with the king of Portugal as a boy. And he was meant to live in the court of the king. Because I don't want to live in the court of the king of Portugal. I want to live in the court of the king of heaven. And he dressed as a saint, as Saint Francis Xavier on All Saints Day, and it made him into a saint. And so many souls have been changed by that. Remember my own case? I, was, I didn't have time to, to dress up like any special saint. It was too lazy. And I always served Mass. And so they said, okay, it would be St. John Vianney. We always have a casting. So threw on a casting, grabbed one of Father Hannity's brother, and I was St. John Vianney. And that's when they said, well, maybe I should be a priest. They said, maybe I should be a priest. And I didn't know if I was going to become a priest, but I said, well, maybe I should be one. But I was about to say, a little kid, and I had to dress up as St. John Vianney because I was lazy. And because I didn't prepare any costume. Because I, I escaped getting ready for a All Saints Day party. And they said, okay, you're St. John. Put on a casting, take Father Hannity's bread. And so... We began to think about the priesthood. And the fact is that we, are, we, we have to have the consideration of saints. We put them before our eyes. Now the devil knows this very well. So what does he do? He presents replacement saints. These are the sports stars. These are the rock stars. Uh, these are the movie heroes. And these are the, the ones that are presented as saints. They're the people of the cartoons. 
And so the, and each one of them lives in a different kind of sin. And each one of them promotes a different kind of vice. And what happens? Children uh, imitate them, think of them, and want to become them as they grow older. We, are, we, we human beings need examples of other human beings. And the saints are there to teach us how to live in every circumstance, how to be in every way. Hence, there should be a common stories of the saints. Saint, John, Saint, Saint Ignatius of Loyola did not want to be a saint. He wanted to be a soldier and to destroy his enemies. But because he was hit by a cannon in Pamplona, and his knee was busted, and he was laid up for one year in hospital, out of sheer boredom, he read the lives of the saints, because there was nothing else for him to do. And therefore, when he read it, he realized, these are real warriors. I don't want to be a warrior. This is what a warrior is. The little Lucy, she was so much more brave than I. She had her eyes cut out, her eyes cut out, and her head chopped off for Christ at the age of 13. And that these little girls are much braver than I. And these young boys are braver than I. And these men who gave themselves to Christ are braver than I. They know what soldier is. And I want to be soldier, so I'm going to have to leave behind the sword of this world and take on the sword of the cross. And because he read a life of a saint, he himself became a saint. And so it is that, that we, we need to hear the stories of the saints. We need to be connected to the saints. And they give us hope that this says such and such, so did I. St. Augustine is conversion. Remember St. Augustine. He believed Ambrose. St. Ambrose. St. Ambrose spoke the truth. Finally he realized, I can't believe in the heresies of the, of the Manichaeans and so on. I can't believe in all these heresies. I believe in the true faith. And I want to be a good Catholic. But he was living with a girl in sin. And he was too attached to the sins of the flesh. And therefore he made his prayer. And his famous prayer of Augustine, O Lord, make me a saint, make me a saint, but not yet. Let's try tomorrow. Let's try the next day. Let's try next week. Then one day he was not even praying. He was just walking. And it came to his mind, Mary Magdalene. It came to his mind, Mary of Egypt, who was also a prostitute several hundred years later. It came to his mind, so many great saints, Mary Magdalene was living an impure life. And what did she do? She went to Christ, she wept on his feet, and she left it forever and became more pure than, than, than many holy virgins. She became so magnificently pure and so wonderful. Mary of Egypt left behind her life of prostitution, and she became most pure and died a hermitess in the desert with great holiness. And what did Augustine do? He said, Ut seek, ut seek. Cor non ego. Oh Lord, make me a saint, make me a saint, but not yet. But then one day he was walking, and he remembered, as such and such, why not I? This is why we must know about the saints. As such and such did, why not I? Why can't I do what they did? It isn't so hard. You might be a thief. You might be a robber. You might be a murderer. You might be a criminal. You might not have any brains. You may have never gone to school. And yet you can say, this man has done no wrong. You can still say that Jesus Christ has done no wrong. You can say that we suffer the just reward of our crimes. We people of the United States. We people that are now beginning to experience the beginnings of real communism. We suffer the just reward of our crimes. But this man has done no wrong. We can speak as Dismas spoke. As he did. And we can turn to our Lord and say, Lord, remember me when thou comest with thy kingdom. Ut seek, ut seek, cor non ego. As such and such did, why not I? Mary of Egypt left behind a wicked life. Mary Magdalene left behind a wicked life. Francis Xavier left behind a wicked life. He was just a college student, party animal. That's all he was. And he left, and he went all over the world to bring souls to Christ and Christ to souls and died a great saint. As such and such, why not I? There is someone as lazy as I who became a saint. Someone as, as, as all my faults who became a saint. And as such and such did, why not I? Why not I? And hence Augustine became a saint because he considered saints. Fra Francis Xavier became a saint because he was with the saints. St. Ignatius became a saint because he read the lives of saints. And so it matters about the saints. It matters what they did, we can do also. 
So therefore, let us know about the saints. And remember that each saint was formed in the hand and arm of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And she is the one who forms saints. She made Christ grow inside of her from a little bitty infant all the way into, his, into, into, into a, a baby born in Bethlehem. Then she held that baby, and the baby was able to walk after a while. And then she helped him crawling, helped him walking. And she will make us able to be born, able to grow, crawl, able to walk, and able to travel in the spiritual life. And when we're on the cross, we will discover that this is the place of saints. Take up your cross and follow me. And here our Lord says in the eight Beatitudes, Blessed are you when the men persecuted me value for my name's sake, for your glory shall be great indeed. So what is our glory as the followers of Jesus Christ? Our glory is the cross, that pain that we carry on our shoulders, that pain we carry in our hearts. This shall be our glory. We are all called to be saints. It is not so difficult. There is an example for each one of us. There's someone to help us overcome each of our problems. There are, there are some, there's someone for each one of us, and let us learn about the saints and imitate their heart and imitate their ways. And then remember that the, the, the key to the becoming a saint, like Augustine, the greatest of the fathers of the church, all he said was, as such and such did, why not I? There were traitors, but they came back. There were those who immersed in impurity, but they abandoned it. There were those who were liars and thieves, and they left behind their lies and their theft. There were those who were heretics, and they abandoned their heresies. There were those filled with the deepest pride, like Augustine himself, and they abandoned their pride. Those who were completely selfish and gave up their lives in complete generosity. And so there is a saint for every sin to be overcome, a saint for every virtue to be attained. And let us consider the saints and try to imitate them. Ut seek, ut seek, cor non ego, as such and such. Why not I? Let us you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.